With just 13 games left in the regular season, the Heat will be back home for a crucial four-game stretch that could very well define their season. Is every game a must-win? Who needs to step up? And what challenge does each opponent present? We'll answer that and more on today's episode of Locked on Heat. You are Locked on Heat, your daily Miami Heat podcast. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. All right, welcome to Locked on Heat, your daily podcast on the Miami Heat. I'm Wes Goldberg, editor at allyoucanheat.com. Joining me as always, it's longtime NBA reporter David Rommel. However you're tuning in on YouTube, Odyssey, or your favorite podcast app, thanks for making Locked on Heat your first listen every day. Today's episode is brought to you by Prize Picks, the easiest and most exciting way to play daily fantasy sports. Go to prizepicks.com slash locked on NBA. Use the code all lowercase locked on NBA for a first deposit match up to $100. Before we get to what will be the Heat's most important stretch of the season and how the Heat can escape the play-in tournament. I wanted to talk a little bit more about Jimmy Butler. Um, We obviously talked about him quite a bit after last night's recap. Uh, He scores 30 points against the Cleveland Cavaliers. The Heat go ahead and win that game. Um, But Jimmy also posted a usage rate of over 30%. In that Cleveland win, meaning that he basically used 30% uh, of Miami's offensive possessions, um, the Heat are now 7-1 and one when he has a usage rate of over 30%. Look, I think there's a lot of things to sort of dig into what the Heat have to do. We're going to talk about what players have to step up later on during this, this four-game homestand that's coming up. Um, but I, I think before we kind of get into anything else uh, and, and how the Heat can maximize the final 13 games of the season... It, we have to talk about Jimmy and just the fact that when he plays like a star, right? Like the Heat suddenly transform from a team that can lose to the Washington Wizards hmm. to a team that I think can beat almost anybody in the league. And his inconsistency this year has been probably the biggest reason why I think the Heat have been so inconsistent. He has eight games in which he's posted a usage rate of over 30%. He hasn't really been available for a lot of games because of nagging injuries and rest and and whatever else. But when he just plays like a star, everything just falls into place for Miami. And we could talk about like the development of Duncan Robinson's off the dribble game and Nikola Jovic becoming a starter and Jaime Hakas being an impact rookie and all these things. But if Jimmy Butler is not a star player, this team does not have a chance. Uh, and I'm not even talking about making the finals. I'm not even talking about the, in the in a, in a playoff series. This team doesn't have a chance to get out of the playing tournament. And so when you look at or yeah, to get out of the playing tournament and just climb into the top right. six in the East standing. So when we look ahead to these final 13 games, I think that it is absolutely necessary that Jimmy Butler play like this. He has to play like an All NBA player. He has to play like a star. And I don't think that we can compromise that, even though he might want to. Um, I know it's hard. I guess the question then, David, is can he do it? Should he do it? Even if it's worth maybe, I don't know, running into a bit of a wall here, if it means that you could get a break for a week and not be in the play-in tournament. My first response is no. I don't think he can do it. I don't think he's at that point in his career where he's capable of being a superstar for a 13-game stretch because it's going to pile up. It's going to lead to something that's going to be much more dangerous down the road when it actually matters. Like I understand that these games all matter. It's really important for them to win, not just as many of the next 13 games as possible, but to win all four of the next upcoming games at home. They're all crucial in their own way because it just gets a little bit more dangerous after that if you don't win out the next four games. But I just don't think that you can continue to ask Jimmy Butler to to carry the team single-handedly, nor should he. I understand that he's the team's best player highest paid player he's a star etc there are a lot of reasons why jimmy is expected to do that but they're also a little unrealistic and we see this all the time like milwaukee right now going through a stretch without Giannis, he carried a heavy load and i think it's safe to say that you should rest him before you go into the playoffs because if not that leads to injuries as we've seen without a decumpo and a couple of occasions versus the miami heat so i think they're playing it safely they sat Chris Middleton, and now they've suddenly brought him back. Obviously, it took some time for him to recover, et cetera. So I don't, I don't want the Heat or the front office or the coaching staff in particular to feel the need to put Jimmy out there and say, guess what, buddy? 
we're going to work you like a dog over the next 13 games because that's our best chance to win. Not over the next 13 games. First of all, like even of the next four games at home, one of them's against the Portland Trailblazers. Does that mean that I think Jimmy should take that game off? Absolutely not. But I also don't think you can have him out there with a 30% usage rate or higher in order for them to beat the Blazers. You shouldn't have to rely on Jimmy Butler for that. Does it make the path easier for the Heat? Absolutely. But there are other options. Bam is expected to return to the lineup at some point, if not Friday night versus the Pelicans. I think you might see the return of some other players. Duncan, who knows what's going on with that sudden back injury. You know, I think Kevin Love could possibly make his way back to the rotation. Again, all pretty uh, up in the air at this point. But I don't think you want to rely on Jimmy in order to carry this team over the next 13 games. And I know a lot of people are already saying, well, that's what you should do. That's a star player. Well, yes. When he's out there, he can't carry the team for the most part. I, at the same time, I think you also have to be framing this with the idea that these games, as important as they are, can lead to a much more severe injury, and you don't want him hobbling into the playoffs because that's when those games are going to matter more and they're going to be much more heavily relying on Jimmy Butler to take them home. Everything you said is absolutely true. I mean, the uh -oh. more that you put on Jimmy Butler, <laughs> here's the but, right? But yeah. um, you made the comparison to Milwaukee, and I get it. The difference between Miami and Milwaukee is the, the Bucks are – the number two seed in the East. They can afford to I rest Giannis over the next few games, and it's not going to matter. They're not going to be in the play-in tournament. Maybe they drop the three or something like that, but that's that's a team that did the work earlier in the year. That's the team that, like, Giannis made an MVP case. He's not going to win it, but he's going to be on a whole lot of ballots in the top five of basically every ballot because he played like an MVP and got them in that position this year. Jimmy Butler hasn't even been close to an MVP level. He, he's sure. barely played at an all NBA level, but for maybe a week and a half all season. And, and that's why Miami is so behind the eight ball here. And it's why they might have to say, okay, you know what? You've gotten four months of rest. Basically. I mm. hope you're ready to go. Like it, you've played eight games where you have played like a star player all season, all season, eight games, not to mention that he's not even going to make the 65 game minimum. To, to be eligible for end of season awards, which he wouldn't be winning anyway, because he hasn't played like that all regular season. And this is not an anti Jimmy thing. I understand that this is what he has to do with 34 years old and all these things. And I agree with you that if you put all this on his plate now, it furthers the risk uh, of, of him not being available in the playoffs. But I guess the counter is like, okay. Like, I don't know what the other option is for the heat, right? Like we're talking about, okay, do you put him through the ringer now? and risk him getting hurt for the playoffs or don't do it and risk missing the playoffs altogether. And at that point, re doing anything other than not playing like a star player seems pretty pointless over these next 13 games. If you end up in the play-in tournament and you lose to a hot shooting Atlanta or, or Chicago team in the second game of the, of the play-in tournament, you know? And so um, I, I think you're right also. Like, it doesn't have to be every game. Like, it's a good point. Like, they play Portland again. They play Washington again. There's, there's cupcakes on the schedule. But it has to be more frequent than what it has been this season, I guess is my point. Oh, no, I, I totally get that. I, I just, you know, my, my point has been for most of the season that these games are vitally important, but the expectation going into the season was never that Jimmy was going to have to carry this team. That was why Tyler was going to step up to be an all-star level candidate. That's why Jam, uh, Bam was at the very beginning of the season playing like one of the top 10 players in the NBA. And both of those players have, you know, their production has dropped. And Jimmy's has been pretty consistent throughout the season. For how, however available he's been, I mean, he's Miami's leading scorer. He's their leading assist man. Like, there are a lot of – he's he's been as productive of as, as you can expect him to be. Knowing full well – You think he could have been more productive? He's averaging, like, 21 points a game. In 2024, yeah. that's nothing. Like, a 20-point-per-game score isn't what it used to be. There's That's fair. 70 guys averaging 20, 20 points a game in the NBA this year. He's not playing even close to what I think. This has been his worst regular season as a Miami Heat player. I mean, I, it's not it's not close. And so, and I, I hear you, like the expectation wasn't this going into the year, but this is where we're at now with 13 games in, in, in left in this season. Like we're not at the beginning of the season. Tyler Hero's hurt, right? Like, I don't know how much you can rely on Terry Rozier as good as he's been over these last eight games, averaging almost 19 points a game, shooting 49% overall. Like, he's been good, but he's not a star. Like, Bam's out with this back injury. We don't know how nagging of an issue that is. Like, it's kind of yeah. just on Jimmy now, and it sucks. Like, I'm not saying that this is ideal, 
but it just sort of feels like that's that's where they're at. Um, last word on this, and then uh, and then we'll get to the homestand. I, I think I think they'll have to take it on a case by case basis, and know that you're going to have to probably give him rest at some point over the mm -hmm. next 13 games, and, and you just so, hope that things break right, and I think and you hope that everybody else steps up because I, I just think that's you have to. You're gonna you need Jimmy. If you find yourself in a play-in tournament, and it could be you, you could bust his ass for the next thirteen games and still wind up in a play-in tournament, and there will you be? You're going to be relying on him during that game, whatever it might be, possibly even two games. You could be in eighth seed anyway, and then you, all of a sudden, let's say you get into the play-in tournament, you get out of it, and you win those games, and now you're an eighth seed going up against the Boston Celtics in the first round, and Jimmy's hobbled because of you know the fact that you had to push him for fifteen games as opposed to I don't know eight of the next thirteen. I don't I, look. Everybody needs to step up. Jimmy included, but I don't think that Jimmy can carry the load for 13 games straight at this point in his career. This four game homestand Pelicans, Cavs, Warriors, Trailblazers. One thing we do know is Jimmy Butler is going to have to step up at least during this stretch. We're going to talk about what's at stake, what the Heat need to do, and what they need to accomplish over this homestand to make sure that they do avoid that playing tournament. We're going to do that next year on Locked on Heat. Today's episode is brought to you by Price Picks. What's Price Picks? Well, it's America's number one fantasy sports app with over 3 million members. It's also the easiest and most exciting way to play daily fantasy sports because it's just you against the numbers. You pick more than or less than the projections on two to six players and you watch the winnings roll in. Price Picks is really simple to play. You can make your picks and submit your entry in less than a minute, 60 seconds. That's all it takes. And from there, you just watch the winnings roll in. Quick withdrawals, easy gameplay. And an enormous selection of players and stat types are what makes Prize Picks the number one daily fantasy sports app. It's just so easy to use. You'll be able to, again, cash in if you go to prizepicks.com slash LockdownNBA and use the code LockdownNBA. You get a first deposit match of up to $100. That's prizepicks.com slash LockdownNBA. Don't forget to use that code LockdownNBA. Prize Picks. Pick more, pick less. It's that easy. Thanks for making Locked On Heat your first listen every day. Make sure you're subscribed on YouTube and on your favorite podcast app. Are you watching Fox Sports or ESPN on your TV all day? Have to turn down the volume with all that shouting? Make the switch to Locked On Sports Today, a free 24-7 sports streaming channel programmed for you every day to bring you the biggest stories without all that screaming. Locked On Sports Today brings you can't-miss analysis, opinions, and news streaming 24-7 on YouTube or the free Amazon Fire TV channels app. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team, Every day, I love David. This new directive that we're getting from the network, going right for Fox Sports and ESPN's throats here, in our in our copy. That's what we do. Coming yeah, out of the know, just, break, for the first just break. like the Miami Heat, you can't afford to take any chances. You got to go for the don't jugular over, every time. Don't, over, don't overlook us, but ESPN, we're coming for you. We're coming for you. <laughs> Dangerously looming network here and Fox Sports, I guess. Yeah. Um. All right. The home stand. So it starts Friday night against the Pelicans. We get the fun right. rematch. Um, oh, it's sideline brawl little... two point oh question mark. Go ahead. Public public service announcement. Uh, Ultra Music Fest taking place this weekend. Also, don't be daunted. Don't let those ravers. Don't let them scare you. Go to the Kaseya Center. They're just on a little Molly. It's okay. I don't even know what the designer drug. Are. I don't know what's going. Yeah, that's probably what you'll hear me hearing a lot of. Don't let them frighten you. They're just the dilated pupils don't mean anything. It's okay. They're harmless. They're gonna wig out, but you just stay away from them and they're fine. Let them sweat it off. They'll be fine. Give them a glass of orange juice and let them chill. Orange Everything's juice. gonna be cool. Yeah. Is that what works? Yeah. Well, I don't, I don't know. Why are you asking me? You brought up orange <laughs> anyway, juice. You're the one that brought the vitamin C into the conversation. I don't know what you're talking about. Leave me alone. Anyway, um uh This is how we challenge ESPN. <laughs> yeah, yeah. With public service yeah. announcements about ultra. We need to support out there. The Heat need your support out there. So make sure you make it out there. Get those uh, wigging out Molly Ultra folks to uh, to attend this Pelicans game so that the Heat have some reinforcements in case there's another sideline brawl. We'll go for it. <laughs> um, so, uh, yeah, that's what's happening. Uh, Cleveland Cavaliers Sunday. The Warriors uh, and, and Trailblazers next week also for this four-game homestand. The Heat, 37-31. and 31. What's interesting is after that Cavaliers loss, Miami's – chances of escaping the play-in tournament and getting a number uh, a top six seed in the east went from a 23 percent chance before the win to a 33.6 percent chance after the win that's according to basketball reference also another one playoff status another one of those probability sites uh, that does a pretty good job they have miami now with a 31 percent chance to get the number six seed so 
best chances basically behind the Indiana Pacers uh, for that sixth seed. So just that one win against Cleveland changed Miami's outlook. Now, again, we're talking about less than, you know, about a third of a chance here, 33% chance, 31% chance, depending um, on actually getting that number six seed. So still overwhelmingly in the play-in tournament, according to these trackers. But um, as you could see, and this is not, this is how math works, I suppose, I'm, even though it's not my specialty, if you win more games, your chances get higher. So what do the Heat have to do, basically, to, how many wins do they need to not end up in the play-in tournament? And according to these trackers, it's about 46 wins, right? If they get about 46 wins and win the tie, and, and win a game on April 7th against the Pacers, I feel pretty good about the Heat. They'll get the tiebreaker over the Pacers in that scenario, and then they'd probably end up with the number six seed. I feel pretty good about that. So 46 wins is the number, and one of those wins has to be that April 7th game against the Pacers. So that means that the Heat have to go 8-5 and five over these next 13 games with one of those wins against Indiana. And I, and I think, and, and that's basically the formula. If you do that, you're, you're in pretty good control, I think, for that six seed. So if they have to go 8-5 and five over the next 13, what do they have to do in this four-game homestand against good competition for the most part. These are tough teams. The Warriors have been playing well lately. The Cavs should play better. They, they played well on, on uh, Wednesday night. The Heat just beat them. Yeah. I thought the Cavs played really well in that game for the most part. Yeah. The Pelicans have been on a roll lately, but they're one of those teams too that are a little bit trick-or-treat. So you never really know what to expect from them. But the game uh, last month was still pretty competitive between those two teams, sideline brawl notwithstanding. So yeah. What do you when you just look at the next four games? What do you think they have to do? Is it is does it does it have to go four and zero? Like what do you what do you look at that and, and think? In my opinion, I think they have to win them all. I think they have to win all these four teams. And of course, that Pacers game looming, the Sixers game beyond that, the Knicks game. I think it's a powerful statement game. It's at home against the New York Knicks, and therefore you're going to have a lot of obnoxious Knicks fans up in the Kaseya Center stands and and you want to be able to you know you want to be able to beat them at, at at your home because it's going to feel like a road game it's the one i guess you could count some boston appearances maybe but it's gonna be the one game where it really feels more like it might be a little bit of a road game or at least a slight advantage for the opposing team there while you're at caseya center um but yeah i think those four games crucial because they're winnable because the pelicans are coming off a back-to-back -back. they're playing even as we're recording mm, this thursday point. Thursday night, they're going to be in Orlando. They leave uh, whatever it's called, the Kia Center, and they fly down that night. So it's, you know, they're going to be playing the night before. No shoot around for them. They go right into Kaseya. They have to get ready in less than 24 hours. Then, you know, you're, you've got the Cavs at home on Sunday. They're going to be on the road. They're going to be without Donovan Mitchell. They're going to be without Evan Mobley. So the same beat up team that you just faced a couple nights ago, now you're at home. It's a good opportunity. Interestingly enough, I think every time this team has faced the Cavs, it's the road team that has won. So this is another opportunity for you to change course on that, beat them at home. That's crucial. The Warriors, mm -hmm. I mean, again, they're going to be on the road as well. This is a team that's going to be going on their East Coast road trip. As much as we and, and Heat fans hate when the Heat are on their six-game, seven-game West Coast road trip, it's the opposite end of the spectrum right now. They're facing Orlando. They're going to Washington. They're going and facing all these teams that they rarely face. And, and one of those teams is Miami. So it's going to be crucial for them to beat them. And then, of course, you've got the home game against the Portland Trailblazers, also on a long road trip for them. They're not a particularly good team, but all the, I think they're a little bit more dangerous, a yeah. little bit healthier right now. You can't afford to take any steps off, any days off. It's really important, I think, for them to win them all. Yeah, they're the Heat are 1-0 against the Pelicans this year, 2-1 and against Cleveland, 1-0 and against the Warriors, 1-0 and against Portland. So they are... Five and one against those teams, and that's rare that the Heat enter a stretch where they're five and one against a subset of teams, right? Like this is, a, uh, especially teams that have winning records, like the Pelicans and right. the Cavs and the, and the Warriors, um, because this is not a team as we've established that they don't really beat teams with winning records very much this season. So they right. have had success against these teams. I think part of it is that they played the Warriors and the Pelicans and the Trailblazers during like basically their best stretch of the season. Yeah. and uh or a couple of their best stretches of the season so look i i think that they can certainly go for no i look at it and i say you gotta go three and one minimum I'll, I'll i'll temper my own expectations if you go three and one that means that after that and if i've we've already established you gotta go eight and five the rest of the way basically since we were recording this you go three and one then that means that you have to go five and four, four. 
yeah. over the final nine games, which is, you know, a hair over 500. Doable. I think the, I, d- d- definitely, considering this is the last hard stretch of the season for Miami, because after that, you already mentioned some of the, the teams. Yeah, the Knicks are going to be difficult, but it's Washington. It's Philly, who's injured and not very good. You got uh, Houston on the second night of a back to back, so you could schedule that as a. They're loss. right on the cusp. If Golden State oh, loses out while they're on this road trip, yeah. Well, if Golden State's on the cusp right now and 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 you know loses games during this road trip of theirs, Houston could find themselves in that spot yeah. for being a playing team. You know, I That's actually like, have that I, marked down as a loss because Miami's will be on the road. They play Philly at home, and then they go on the road to Houston for the second night of a back to back. And like you mentioned, the Rockets are playing well and they're motivated. I have that marked down as a loss. I have the Dallas game after Atlanta later in the year also marked down as a loss, just a scheduled loss game, yeah. because, yeah. well, and it's a second night of a back-to-back. So I just basically took the two night. I'm just going to go ahead and assume that we lose those two second night of a back-to-back games, scheduled losses, all right? So just mark them down as L's. So if you go if you go three and one on this trip and then lose those two nights on the back-to-backs, that's three of your five losses that you're allowed for the rest well, of the Well, let's year. hope that Houston game's a win because we're planning a watch party for that night. So I'd, I'd like to see them win that's it out. I don't know. I'd... Good point. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so there we go. That's basically, I think, what the Heat have to do. I think um, easier said than done, obviously. All right. We're going to dive in a little bit more in detail. What's at stake during this homestand? How can the Heat go 3-1 and one or 4-0 and oh during this homestand? And which players need to step up? We're going to talk about that next year on Locked on Heat. Today's episode is brought to you by eBay's Guaranteed Fit. Passion, drive, and patience. What brings home the winning trophy is also what keeps your ride or die alive. eBay Motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance from superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED headlights, and more. Whether you're into speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has got you covered. With over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die, you'll always find exactly what you're looking for. And with eBay Guaranteed Fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or your money back because with the eBay Motors, you're burning rubber and not cash. With all the parts you need at the prices you want, it's easy to turn your car into the MVP and bring home that win. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only, exclusions do apply, and eBay guaranteed fit only available to U.S. customers. Thanks for making Locked on Heat your first listen every day. Make sure you're subscribed on YouTube and on your favorite podcast app. If you're watching this on YouTube, hit the like button, comment. Let us know what you think. Does Jimmy Butler have to play like a star the rest of the way? How many games do the Heat have to win? And do you anticipate Miami avoiding the playing tournament? Because, man, there's been a lot of talk about what the Western Conference playing tournament is going to be. And, and, you know, no bones about it. That's going to be the tougher one. (laughs) That's the the group of, of death there. I mean, right now it's Dallas, Phoenix, Lakers, Warriors. I mean, to imagine not all four of those teams even being in the playoffs in the West is... Sure. It's pretty crazy when you think about how loaded yeah. the Western Conference is. But you look at Miami's Miami's side. Right now, if the play-in tournament were to start today, it would be the Miami Heat, the Sixers, the Bulls, and the Hawks. Now, the Bulls and the Hawks, are, they stink. Like, But they're dangerous in terms of being able to you know, yeah. catch a breeze and, and shoot and, and hit a bunch of three-pointers and, and eliminate the loser of the Heat-Sixers game, which would be the 7-8 game right now. And you don't want to be in that position. And if the Pacers fall into the playing tournament, then that's a really dangerous team because nobody wants to play Halliburton and, and Siakam in that group. Um, yeah. So, and we know how they perform in tournaments. So that's, <laughs> there's that. Um, there's that, that one tournament sample says. Yeah. As much as we got. Well, they're dangerous. I mean, you're, you're right. They're 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 explosive, or at least theoretically they are. Like obviously, and Halliburton always injury, plays Miami well. He scores forty points every time he plays them. He's been hurt, man. He's a he's, he not, he's a shade that's of a himself, and, and so. Like if there's any hope for Miami, it's you know that when they face that Pacers team on April seventh, it's going to be a, com- a completely different version of the team that they faced mm. earlier in the season. I mean, and and they can be defended at this point, especially if you're just going to let him shoot, and if he's just going to shoot twenty eight percent the way he has from three over the last couple of weeks yeah. since his return from injury. So it's just um, things are breaking Maybe right a for Miami. Weeks, Time he's to a little bit healthier, but if you do, you really think that things are. I mean, they have an easy schedule compared to teams like Indiana and like Philadelphia. Um, but let's look. Let's look at these four games. Let's look at the Pelicans game Friday night. Six game, six of the next seven at home. Yeah. Tough games against the Knicks, etc. But I mean, winnable game. Like, I, there's no game in the future that isn't winnable for Miami. And as much as those two back-to-back games are potentially scheduled losses, 
it's not like we haven't seen surprises from the Miami Heat before when these sure. games matter, you know. So who knows? Maybe by that point, Tyler will be back in full swing and popping 30 points a game. Is, is it possible? Certainly. I, I don't know. And, and it's a bad place to be in for, as a reporter, as somebody who covers the team. And at the same time, it's just it gives you a, a, a little bit of optimism and hope that maybe they can pull it off. Can they yeah. go 13 the and 0 over the next game? Yeah. I, I don't want it to sound like I'm a doubter or some sort of hater no. just saying like they're going to lose the, those back-to-back games. I'm just saying if you got to go eight and five, well, yeah, no, I, you're yeah. allowed a couple of losses it, here, and those would be the ones I would pencil sense. in. And if you beat those, if you win those games that you otherwise thought might could be a scheduled loss because you have a rest disadvantage, then it bolsters your case to climb even further. Eight, so Eight and five seems much more realistic for it this does, team doesn't it? the next 13 games. Yeah, it does. That's it. That's I all mean, you have to do. Eight and five. Lay it out you like have that. to win that yeah. Pacers game. You, it, it starts one. It starts tonight with the Pelicans game. Let's talk about the Pelicans game. Um, you mentioned second night of back-to-back. It's a great point coming from Orlando. Can we call that like the they, – they have the Kia Center. We have the Kaseya yeah, Center. So. Can we call it the Kia Seya stretch for road teams? Like what could we – there's something there. We can work like the Kia Center stretch. The Kia Seya. Yeah, like that. The Kia yeah, Seya like that. channel. Yeah, you know, you, you know they have the Texas Twister, right? When you go right. out there in Dallas, San Antonio, uh, you know, they had one more – uh, no, never mind. I was gonna say if they had one more arena in Jacksonville, then what starts with a K, that's uh, a little too close to home for Northern Florida. You don't want to. You don't want to go on the. Tra- <laughs> you don't want to go on the KK trail cycle. Yeah, you don't yeah, want to yeah. go on a trail somewhere. Um, yeah. Trail's never good. Uh, no. Zion, that's the big. That's that. That's the no, swing factor here. Uh, Bam Adebayo primarily guarded him the last time these teams played. The anticipation, at least, is that he will be available for this Friday night game. Um, and that he'll get that Zion Williamson assignment again. Zion is basically they're, they're they're running point Zion right now in New Orleans. I don't know how it's many of ridiculous. our fans have been watching Pelicans games, but they've been wildly entertaining. He has been awesome. Yeah. Um, guys like Trey Murphy and Herb Jones are are hitting Herb threes. Herb Jones has like, been ridiculous. I think, should, I think he shoots like fifty percent from three yeah. over the last few months. Even like I mean, yeah, he's been really really good. I mean, he was dangerous against Miami. They have a mm-hmm. lot of different weapons there. Less reliant on guys like McCollum. Brandon Ingram's been playing well, though, too. Like, I mean, they've got a lot of, yep. they've been getting a lot of production there and been winning a lot of games. And they go They're small really now with like Larry Nance yeah. down the stretch as, as like Oof. kind of the quote unquote center, even if Zion kind of guards other centers sometimes. Like, they're really interesting. And what Willie Green is doing there is, is, has been remarkable in terms of a coaching job. But this is not going to be an easy game. The Pelicans are tough, they are physical, they will fight you, as we know. Um, and the Heat will fight back. But, um, it's not going to be easy. They've to go seven of eight. I didn't even another. realize this. I, yeah, they're eight of awesome. uh, last ten. Seven of they, eight. They yeah, hold, been... Everybody expects them to kind of drop into that play in, but they are they are now two and a half games up on Dallas in that yeah. fifth seed. They're two games up on Sacramento, who are the sixth seed. Like it, like everybody's just sort of waiting for the Pelicans to collapse, and it has not been happening. This they could leap very good the basketball team. This is a yeah. very good basketball team. What do you think the Heat have to do to win it? Limit, uh, limit Zion. I- I think he's explosive, obviously, and I, I don't. I don't think it would work for him to just be able to generate the kind of offense he has been of late. So you find a way to limit him, where he, they, you know, at least challenge him from getting those open lanes and and being able to finish at the rim because he is so tough to stop because that second jump of his is so impossible, uh, and at least a lot of second chance points, even if he doesn't get that first opportunity to fall. Um, have him spray it out to shooters, and then just kind of. If, Find your way. I mean, find your way to be able to close out on them and, and limit their, their shot opportunities there. might sound overly simplistic, but you've got to be able to keep them from hitting, you know, over 40% from three. And that's easier said than done with the way they've been playing lately. Got to limit their transition opportunities. When Zion rips those rebounds down and gets ahead of steam in, in, in the full court, it's it's game over, man. Like, there's nobody, yep. Bam included, that's stopping him. So, um, But Bam does the best job, for my money, guarding Giannis. The Zion in this role in New Orleans is kind of the closest thing to that. Uh, yeah. It's a little bit different, obviously, but it's between the speed, the strength, and the velocity that he moves and what he's going to do in the open floor. I, I trust Bam to at least handle that. He did a good job uh, sort of doing, like, I think Zion, like, 23, 24 points in the last matchup, um, Zion, and, and Bam had primarily the assignment there. I thought he did okay. He just You can't let Zion just go off. You can't let Zion look like an MVP like he can sometimes look you know once a week so um that to me is the main thing if bam can sort of corral zion limit the transition opportunities and of course by limiting the transition opportunities what do you got to do you got to make your own shots Mm -hmm. that's the thing the pelicans have so many guys who can rebound and push the tempo 
uh, yeah. that you don't want to give them that many opportunities. You mentioned closing out on shooters. I thought they did a really good job of that over the last few games, yeah. especially Nikola Jovic, who's been really good defensively lately. I shouldn't say really good, but it's much improved since the beginning of the year. Um, well, against the Pelicans, they held them to just 22% shooting in the previous matchup. They held yeah. up to 39, 38% overall from the floor. To your point, Miami shot 46% from the field and 45% from three. Mm -hmm. So they were hitting all their shots, keeping uh, the Pelicans off the glass, limiting their transition opportunity. So uh, that's the recipe. You know and what the, to do. You just have to do it. The Heat have the number one defensive rating in the league since February 1st. That's still the case. The problem is that they haven't had a hard time scoring points in a lot of those games. But defensively, you look at the teams coming up, Pelicans, Cavs have a very good offense. The Warriors obviously have a very good offense. Their questions are all on the defensive end. Um, but yeah. that defense is going to have, if they could slow these games down, then yeah. that's that's sort of the formula for Miami. Slow these games down, take the ball out of Zion's hands, take the ball out of Darius Garland's hands, take the ball out of Steph's hands. That, that Portland game, I mean, Anthony Simons has been on a heater lately. Jeremy Grant yeah. has been steady for them. Like, take the ball out of Scoot's Simons' back hands. Too. Scoot's been playing a little bit better. Like, um, and so that's Aiden that's going to be it. Was, he um, was really dangerous against Miami in their previous yeah. matchup until he got hurt too. So like he's another guy again. If you want, if you can control the glass, limit those opportunities because he was just finishing everything at the rim. And you know that Miami is, can't be easily victimized by yeah. your more sizable players that are at least even borderline effective around the rim. We will be back Sunday night to recap that Cleveland game. We'll see what we do about this Pelicans game, David. We're still talking about maybe recapping it or not. We don't know what we're going to do with it yet, but. We will be with you for the homestand and the rest of the way. Hopefully the Heat can make the most out of this four-game homestand. For now, thanks for making Locked on Heat your first listen every day. Hit that subscribe button on YouTube and follow us on your podcast app.